ഹിരണ്യാക്ഷ സ്പിരിച്വൽ ലൈഫ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ സീക്കേഴ്സ് കെ നോട്ട് ബി വൺ സ്മൂത്ത് സിൽവറി റോഡ് ഇൻഡീഡ് വൺ ഹാസ് ടു ക്ലൈംബ് അപ്പ് ഹിൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഗോ ഡൗൺ ദ ഡേൽസ് ആൻഡ് അഗെയിൻ അപ് ദ മൗണ്ടൻസ് ടു ലൈക്ക് ദ തിരുമലൈ ഹിൽസ് ഇൻ എൻ അറ്റംപ്റ്റ് ടു റീച്ച് ദ സമ്മിറ്റ് even in climbing the even smooth motorable road a new enthusiastic owner driver may get upset and worried and may think twice that in spite of the numerous cautions and hairpin sign boards has he taken the wrong route or missed the way somewhere in the middle because the road after a pretty hard climbing up is now running down and down and he can see the precipitous ravine below but poor man he does not know that even in climbing up there have to be some running down to reach greater heights it's peculiar to hill traffic when the monsoon is fully set in if the elements all of a sudden have become tame and quiet even against their own nature if the clouds do not move the winds do not blow the sea has thought fit to become calm the old fisherman smells rightly indeed that the storm is not far behind the beyond the horizon it's all the lull before the tempest tempest it was the serene hermitage of maharshi kashipa the great grandson of brahma the evening sun was just half visible on the horizon looking like a mighty ship floating on the crimson red sea of the western sky the birds having settled on their nests were adding their own symphony to nature's calmness the breeze was smooth the animals had reached their abodes for the night's rest the ripples of the yonder brook were clearly audible as if somebody was reading the holy scriptures sage kashipa had just finished his evening worship of the fire god with the usual milk and rice he was sitting on the veranda with nothing to worry for no anxieties for the future or any regrets for the past he was immersed in himself amidst the pure calmness and peace and was in direct communion with the self his wife diti one out of the 13 he had married came to him with an urgent request oh lord all my sisters who have married you are blessed with children they are all happy with their offsprings how can i bear my unfortunate condition in peace and live amidst them please grant me a child so that i may move among my sisters with my head up the sage replied it's quite good that you have chosen to ask for a child it's my duty to please you a husband has to please his wife and keep her contented and happy a wife is like a strong fort for a man under whose protection he can defend himself against all the onslaughts of the temptations from the world outside and have a straight voyage for liberation so i'll be glad to please you but please wait for an hour or two the sun has not yet set this is the sandhya time the meeting of the day and night all the gods specially rudra will be having their tours and it is but right that we respect them when they are on the move lest we beget their displeasure but the lady diti was not amenable to reason she dragged the sage by the cloth and he mentally prostrated to the lord and followed her then he bathed again and sat down and began to repeat the sacred gayatri for the condemnation of all the faults that have taken place in spite of himself meanwhile his wife came to him again with downcast eyes and began to apologize for her misbehavior and begged that her offspring might not be cursed by the gods rudra and others the sage replied that faults could not go unpunished if a fault is committed the consequences must also be borne with calmness now since you are rep- repentant you will have two sons who will be the most wicked ones on the earth and they will have their death at the hands of the lord himself but one of your grandsons out of your eldest son will be a very great devotee of the lord 
and he will excel all men and gods in his devotion and the lord will be much pleased with him this is all that i can do to help you diti was much pleased that her sons will meet their death at the hands of the lord and that her grandson will be a very great devotee diti bore the seeds of the sage a sage who was himself capable of creating the whole world for 100 years before she gave birth to twins there were great calamities on the earth and in the heavens when the birth took place brahma consoled the gods from fear revealing the news of the birth of the two demons the twins were duly named by the sage as hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha they grew very strong and powerful both of them performed great tapas and brahma gave them the boon that they would not be killed by anybody other than the supreme lord himself so the earth was too narrow for their activity hiranyaksha the younger one with great courage and strength went round the world with mace in hand but could find none to meet him in war he entered the sea and confronted varuna the sea god who was said to be of mighty strength but varuna politely regretted that he was too old and not ready for a war and so he advised him to search for the supreme lord who would be too pleased to accede to his request and give him an eternal rest swayambhuva manu was the fifth first descendant of brahma the creator swayambhuva manu was the first descendant of brahma the creator he wanted to be a very obedient son brahma told him to rule the earth with discrimination and that would be the best advice to his father but the earth was almost submerged in water and brahma was just pondering as how to get the earth out of the water water as he was thus thinking the lord purushottama sprouted out of brahma's nose in the form of tiny pig jumped into the air stood in the sky and in a moment in a moment grew to the size of a big elephant brahma and all the sages and their disciples stood aghast wondering at the strange occurrence brahma understood that the lord knew his dilemma and to relieve him of the same he has taken this trouble the big boar then showed all its abilities by jumping roaring and tilting etc and decided to enter the sea for getting the earth out the sea god varuna was much afraid and began to praise the lord and beg that he should show pity on him the boar entered the sea took hold of the earth with its tusks and was emerging out hiranyaksha was searching for the supreme lord everywhere as advised by varuna but could not find him narada met him on the way and informed him that the lord had entered the sea to get the earth out and he could meet him there hiranyaksha who was in the form of sturdy bull dived deep into the sea and found the lord in the form of a wild boar carrying the earth on his tusks the demon confronted him and called him for battle shri hari left the earth on the surface of the ocean and by his own power made it float and not sink down then he turned to the demon and began to fight they both fought with huge maces both were injured and yet were fighting brahma and many of the sages came there to witness the duel they praised the lord and requested him to put an end to the demon who was causing great havoc to all living creatures he was misusing the boon that he had obtained by tapas the midday call abhijit lagna was just come it comes the best time for gods so he was requested to make haste to put an end to the demon without delay while they were fighting the mace from the hand of shri hari slipped down and he had no weapon the demon out of chivalry and conduct of righteous duel passed till shri hari invoked his discus then the fight continued at one time the demon threw his mace on the lord but the lord caught hold of it with his left hand 
The demon was much ashamed. He took up the trident, but the Lord smashed it into pieces. At last the Lord gave a blow on the ear of the demon and he fell down dead, rolling on the ground. Brahma and the sages praised the Lord for the victory. Thus one of the two brothers, celestial attendants of Vaikuntha, passed off one birth, constantly remembering the Lord in his mind, though out of hatred. Parikshit, after hearing many stories of the Lord, asked Shuka, O sage, the Supreme Lord is omnipresent, all-powerful and an ocean of mercy. He has no enemies. He is a friend of all creatures. He has no fear from the demons. Yet he has killed the demons with great strain to himself, just for the sake of Indra and protected the gods. What did he gain? Why was he harming the demons? Please explain, Shuka replied. The Supreme Lord has no enmity. He is a friend of all. All can approach him and merge in him. He has no limitations. He has no qualities. He cannot be perceived. He has no births. He is unaffected by Prakriti. Through his Maya, he creates the doer-sufferer contact. By Sattva, he establishes the gods. By Rajas and Tamas, he ex establishes the Rakshasas and Yakshas. I am the body concept creates the I and my feelings. feelings. As long as there is body consciousness, honor and dishonor are felt. Honor, dishonor, abuses, pain and death pertain to the body. One who has no consciousness of the body has no actions. One who has no doership, feeling in action, does not reap any fruit of the action. One who kills without owing, owning the action does not kill. The Lord has no enmity with anybody. He can be approached and merged into through love, friendship, relationship, kinship, fear or hatred. He is ready to receive them. The gopis merged in him through love, pandavas through friendship, the yadavas through relationship, kinship, kamsa through fear and the demons through hatred, narada and others through devotion. The remembrance of the Lord through hatred is more potent than through devotion. The gatekeepers of Vaikuntha, Jaya and Vijaya prefer to exhaust their curse as demons through hatred within three births. First as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakasipu. The Lord killed the demons only to take them back soon to his abode.